And then we got here this news courtesy of Hype Beast about the off white dunk Nike lows, the 50s, which obviously have, you know, for the most part, I think today and yesterday or a couple of days ago, people who've been lucky enough to be selected to have a chance to enter the raffle to buy a pair should have been notified already. The distribution of these has been hilarious to see. It's all this. It, the, <laughs> The conversation around these shoes when they drop always, especially when it comes to Virgil and Off-White stuff, is always hilarious because for the most part, most people always start off saying the design is shit, right? That was what the first thing came out when the original images leaked or the original color codes leaked and people were putting together the um, mock-ups of what the shoes might look like. And then Virgil had that post where he was like, oh, I could never design something so shitty. I'm best designer in the world. And everyone was like, okay, cool. And, you know, that discourse and people got angry at him and then he kind of had to set the record straight, put out the material. And then people tried to convince us that they didn't like them. <clears throat> and then the release information comes out and they let you know here that you will see random distribution here courtesy of Hypebeast in terms of getting your pair <coughs> god almighty I forgot a frog in my throat so obviously if you're not familiar if you're not aware it's obviously um, Nike Dunk Lowe's there's a collection of 50 varying different colorways you know different color bases there's a whole educated nuanced um researched way of kind of looking at the shoes and how they got to this you know conclusion it doesn't matter right now if you want more information about that go in virgil's profile i'm sure you put up some you know supporting information regarding it but the release information is the most interesting part of it, it says here um the release information was released in a sneakers live episode hosted by Lucian Dixon and it said the following the collection is made up of 50 renditions following a similar sale gray colorways with a variety of colors used in the overlay laces last lot in particular will take on an all black colorway with the white laces each pair is looped with a signature off white tag and contains a badge and a midsole um, pertaining to the number of the shoe out of 50 cool all were well and good according to the episode all colorways will see a random distribution on sneakers exclusive access wherein users will be able to snag a pair but won't be able to choose which pair they're getting right so number one you have to get exclusive access to sneakers which is not permitted to everybody right only some accounts have it maybe it's you know some people would argue it's how much you buy on there which is all gobbledygook because they, they do the same thing with like dover street market and like um what is it what site is it and some of those sites and they always say oh it's how much you buy from the store it's, it's bullshit it's random who knows what it really is we don't have any idea because these people won't tell us because you know that's where their main ip and kind of you know um hold over the scene kind of hangs completely understand that but you have to first get the exclusive access and then once you get the exclusive access you can't even choose which pair you want you have to you just get given them randomly now don't get me wrong it's that not shouldn't be that much of a episode or that much of an issue because the likelihood of you getting the all white pair that everybody wants or the all black pair is unlikely anyway and the rest of the colorway is like much of a muchness they've mostly got the same base with only the real difference being the insoles the tongue and the kind of overlay lacing system thing on the top and obviously the number blah 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 but you know it's most of it is cosmetic don't get me wrong i understand cosmetics is important in sneakers but it's not like a you know if you if you get this and that there's no big big difference but the fact that you can't choose is one of the most insane things that i've ever seen in my life and at the end here lucky winners are only allowed to select their size right so they're preventing you from choosing your own colorway but then they're only letting you buy it if it's your size legitimately one of the most insane things i've ever seen and it continues so dixon stated that hardcore fans of off-white and sneakers will have a higher chance of being selected rather than just merely watching the sneakers live episodes what does that even mean what does that mean so if you're a hardcore fan of off-white and sneakers what does that mean because he's only what how many shoes has he put out via nike right um all of them were limited all of them were put through some raffle system so i'd imagine there's not a lot of people that are able to get a lot of the pairs of shoes if you got one does that mean you're a hardcore fan or not so you had to watch this live sneakers episodes what does that do does that put you in the in the running to get in a pair like the games and the fugazi nonsense that they pedal like i think i was talking about it today earlier on twitter it's like these brands nike especially right they have such a it feels like a disdain for people who they clearly market these shoes to they make it as hard as possible for you to buy them they don't really respect the consumers it feels like for the most part they take the piss out of them they spend the best part of what a year maybe less sending shoes to influencers and letting them wear them first and making you get excited and giddy over the shoes which is great marketing it works you see young lord wearing them you see asap nas wearing a shoe that you like and you think oh i want that shoe and then when it comes to having opportunity to buy them 
it's limited because there's not a lot of retailers out there because of the nature of retail cool it is what it is and the ones that are available <coughs> they want you to like a post they want you to leave a comment they want you to share something tag a friend all this nonsense to have the chance to enter a raffle in order for you to win the possibility of buying a pair with your own money they've even over this entire process especially in the sneaker world they've somehow been able to change the meaning of what a raffle means back in the day when i was growing up a raffle meant you would buy a ticket for like a nominal fee a dollar a pound and that ticket would permit you the possibility of winning a prize that far exceeded the ticket that you bought so maybe you could win you know a washing machine um a car or whatever that's what usually entering a raffle was about but now they've made raffle to mean the opportunity to buy a shoe that you obviously want to have the money to pay for and then to make it even difficult they don't really explain the process of you being selected there is no rhyme and reason how you get selected it's just completely random i will say before like i'd really like there to be somebody to make an experiment where they'd spent the entire year um calendar year january to december trying to enter as many sneaker releases especially some of the high profile releases throughout the year and try and see how many shoes they were legitimately able to get and i think it'll be frightening the amount of shoes that you're actually able to get in a year it's not that much especially the stuff that you actually want not the shitty things that they try and pedal on stick because they're very clever that way nike they'll throw in some stuff that you clearly don't want on the app just so you can notify yourself and reserve and in case you don't get a pair you want you're still gonna end up double dipping or you're still gonna end up trying to buy a backup pair in order to kind of save the day quote unquote and it's just funny to me to see sneakerheads on social media complain and cry over these things because it doesn't change because no one cares because it feels like sneakerheads love the punishment they love to get pissed on by these brands they love to get taken the piss out of because it kind of makes them feel like they're part of something it kind of makes you feel alive but i'm at this point where I don't count myself as a sneakerhead. I think those labels are flipping corny and lame as fuck. And I'm a grown adult and I have disposable income. And if I'm able and willing to buy something, I should have the, pop the, op the opportunity or the possibility of doing so. I don't expect to be able to buy an off-white shoe in fucking JD Sports. Don't get me wrong, but I'm not going to do a cartwheel to try and buy a shoe. I'm not going to write an essay. I'm not going to take a picture of my foot in my bed. Do you know what I mean? I'm not going to do nothing stupid. I just want the easy possible chance to get it, which is why still to this day, there doesn't seem to be a better option than just having the ability to buy the shoe at the store and queue but again queuing you know that whole system can get a little bit fugazi but they haven't been able to create a system uh you know after all these years after all the billion and you know it feels like billions that have been spent in the sneaker industry you know around the world they still haven't figured out a way to clearly and adequately supply shoes to sneakers i want to buy them and i just don't buy this idea but it's limited edition all this stuff now go go jump off a cliff sneaker industry now is a billion dollar industry everybody and their mom is a sneakerhead you just have to make more it just is what it is you can't keep purporting to make these shoes limited but then they flood the market no one can get a pair but then everyone can get a pair and then you limit where you're going to sell them like you can't have two you can't have both things at once i don't think so both things at the same time you can't just keep pushing everything as limited and then keep making thousand like for this this is 50 pairs of shoes uh, what's the overall quantity of them do you think overall in collection hundred thousand maybe less than that more than that it's a lot of trainers right it's a lot of flipping materials a lot of um junk it's you know it doesn't really ascribe to the whole sustainability thing that everyone seems to be on at the moment and it just seems to be so perplexing how you just can't give people the opportunity to buy them because it still feels like to me the sneakerhead scene is still relatively small when it comes to when in comparison to the overall general consumer that buys shoes right i'd assume the there is still a greater number of average joes who just go and buy you know classic new balances classic air forces a classic pair of reboxes year in year out who don't care about sneakerhead stuff right so if that's the case and they're still serving a niche scene of people who are clearly still passionate about it why not just give them the shoes so they can buy them i don't understand all this song and dance all these histrionics and all this flipping games and theater it's just nonsense and again it's just sad to see the sneakerheads crying about the same thing because nothing seems to change like you know you've got this page here la free life um posting a screenshot of you know them be unsuccessful to get you know the chance to buy the pair this is i hate sneakers that more every day single day but again they come back every year and more people here in the comments posting screenshots so they're like what what is this we've, we've if we've seen one screenshot do we need to see three we know what a l screenshot looks like but they'll come back again 
every single year every single day every single week they'll come back to get their face pissed on by these brands because i think they enjoy the punishment i think these guys legitimately enjoy the thrill of catching an l the thrill of will i won't i be able to win a chance to buy a shoe with my hard-earned money it brings them life it gives them joy and these sneaker brands have, are not being held to account. No one's really calling them out for, again, these flipping, you know, artificial, or yeah, no, these kind of uh, um, artificial scarcity things that they do with these quote unquote limited edition shoes. It's just a nonsense. It really, really is a nonsense. But that release, again, I like the shoes. I was one of the only people that actually said when they first dropped, I think I make a couple of clips on my channel about the shoes in general. I quite like the dunks. I think they look fairly good, especially the black and silver pair. But I think most of the colorways in the entire 50 collections are pretty decent um, as dunks go. Again, dunks are my favorite model in the world, but the cheek of these people is saying to you that you can't even, you know, first of all, you need exclusive access to get a pair to actually have a chance to choose and then you can't even choose a pair they have to be given to you and you can only buy them in your size it's just like oh, the goal the goal on these people man which is why i'm which is why it makes me laugh when all these sneakerheads have also get on their high horse about people that buy reps and, and fakes and stuff it's like what do you think what to do not everybody is, is willing and happy to put themselves under some level of embarrassment and kind of shame in order to go through this nonsense of asking friends to bring you in and get you a pair. Not, one, not everybody's okay with that. Some people just want to buy shoes and keep it moving. They don't want to communicate with stores and send emails and fill in Google Forms. They're just not for it. So if some people are willing to just do the floss thing and go and buy a pair from a Shenzhen factory somewhere, let them be, isn't it? Of course, they know deep down it's not the real thing. It is what it is. But it's just funny that you see these sneakerheads kind of policing shoes for the brands when the brands themselves aren't doing anything to help these guys get the shoes. You know what I mean? They're fighting for them and they're not fighting for you. It's just like, it's a nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. So, you, you know, kind of indirectly, these brands doing all this Fugazi stuff, they've indirectly kind of you know built and kind of spurned this whole replica fake scene which is indirectly sponsoring flipping you know terrorism attacks around the world and then they've got these guys on the other side you know with their limited edition sweat factory shoes they're not giving everyone a chance to buy it's just like i don't know i absolutely don't know about this stuff it's just it's legitimately insane and this is this is coming from somebody that's worked on the inside my time working at nike as well showed me that it's not even better on the inside it's just it's e equally harder to get them when you're working for them it's not even a guarantee that you can get a pair you still have to beg and ox people for favors and suck a dick and you know check up on people and say hey man hope you're well man just checking in to see if you got like you have to do all that cringy stuff to get shoes it's not even easy you can't even just fill in the form at your desk and have someone bring you a shoe you have to kind of you know suck someone off uh, on your lunch break or whatnot it's just all a nonsense it's all a nonsense i hate it all i hate it all which is why i'm just you know buying the stuff that i buy the old stuff the whatever trying to rebuild my collection with the stuff they actually like but when it comes to trying all this stuff if i can't just fill in a form that just like my size and enter and see what happens cool but i'm not going to like and subscribe i'm not going to retweet i'm not going to tag a friend in the thing i'm not going to send you like i remember those skate shops asking you to send them stories about your first dunk like go and fuck off like jump off a cliff honestly do a run honestly run into a wall run into traffic if you think i'm going to tell you a story about the first time i saw someone do a kickflip like are you insane insane like oh yeah yeah these people are absolutely sick in the head i guarantee you they're sick in the